Hey there, and welcome to this second video about the Levant. We're going to talk about Israel this time, but we're still talking about Canaan, still talking about the same place and how Israel came to be in that area. So an important note about names before we get started. Um, I'm going to talk about the Israelites throughout most of this time frame, just to simplify the name that I am using. But that is going to refer to both the people who lived in the kingdom of Israel, or later when it's two split kingdoms, the Israel and Judah. I'm going to refer to all of them as Israelites because they share that culture and religion. And when I say Hebrews, that's the term for the people uh, based on the language. They spoke a language called Hebrew. And so people who were not in their culture called them Hebrews, uh, the Egyptians, for example. And, you know, Jews in the modern day world, um, Jewish people, uh, that's a, a more modern term. And it is connected to Judaism, the religion that came out of the Israelites, these folk who lived back then. So when I say Israelites, I'm talking about the ancient kingdom, not the modern day uh, country, and not even necessarily that modern day people, although there is a fascinating connection between those two. So we're going to talk more about that in a second. Now, a reminder, this is the location that we are talking about between Egypt and Mesopotamia, and it was variously conquered by different people over time. Egypt here, you can see, conquers it during this time period. But then later, you can see over here, the Assyrian Empire conquers it again. But in the in-between, there, there are kingdoms there, Israel and Judah, that we're going to talk about. So for our timeline. The timeline is the same, because the people living in this area are called Canaanites. And before the time period where Israel existed, the Israelites we're probably still already there, living on the margins of society, um, outside of the major cities, herding sheep and ex you know existing in that more nomadic pastoral life. But then the Bronze Age collapse comes in, boom, big old reset button, and the Canaanite cities are variously destroyed, abandoned, their civilization collapses like a little bit, and then new people come in and settle. And the Israelites are one of those new people. Um, they were certainly connected to the Canaanites. They shared uh, you know features like religious and social features, but... The Israelites come in and also the Philistines, who are one of those invading peoples who came in and sort of like caused the Bronze Age collapse, settle along the coastline. So then these are these new neighbors for the Canaanites and for the later Phoenicians. So there are some important people here, Saul, David, and Solomon. They're the early kings of a united Israel that uh, once they come into that hill country and they set up their cities, those are their early kings, but they split into two separate kingdoms, the Israelites, even though they have a common shared identity. Um, and when ri written records start appearing again, uh, we pretty quickly, we have a pretty short period of time before there's a moment where Israel is conquered and the people there are taken away in captivity. And when they come back, they find that the people who had remained behind had kind of become just part of the average culture there and hadn't kept their unique cultural identity. And so they set down a religious text to try and cement their identity. And that becomes their core religious text called the Torah, which we'll talk about more in a minute. And then finally, an important one to mention here is that eventually, after the reestablishment of the Jewish people living in this land, um, the Romans forced these Israelites into a diaspora after a, a failed rebellion. And so when the Romans do that, that means they disperse them across the world. A diaspora is a dispersal of people across the world. And they take all their texts with them and their culture goes with them. And it's that's part of the story of why there are Jewish people living in the United States today, for example. Part of the story. Um, but let's dive into the, the local geography. You can see here that it's likely that the Israelites originally lived further to the east, but moved in during that uh, Bronze Age collapse period into a place that had honestly few natural resources, though perhaps more than where they had come from. There are deserts to the south of them. The coastline is usually controlled by the Phoenicians or the Philistines. Um, and much of this interior land that they live in is just rock-strewn hills, not a lot of resources. But there is some fertile land um, you can see along the Jordan River Valley and the Sea of Galilee. And the Dead Sea to the south, though, is actually kind of a rough place because it's so toxic there are no fish in it. Um, it's, it's full of salt. Um, but the writing, what they left behind, is really what we know them for. So a lot of evidence about Israel comes from archaeological excavations, of which there have been a lot, um, and references in contemporary documents from Egypt and Assyria from those time periods. But the vast majority of the information we have, the specific, like who did what and where, comes from the Hebrew Bible, which is called the Old Testament by Christians, even though it doesn't perfectly line up. It's not all exactly the same texts. But the Torah is part of that. And the Torah and later writings, they were originally transmitted just by word of mouth. They were transmitted orally, similar to what we saw in ancient India. And they were first set down in writing, kind of scattered fashion, but 
after that Babylonian captivity, the priests who returned were like, what are you all doing right now? You're so different than we think we should be. And so they set down this religious text to sort of like set in stone what it is that it meant to be an Israelite, what it meant to believe in this religion and have this culture. And so historians disagree about how accurately this document represents Israelite history because the purpose for them wasn't to set down their history perfectly. It was to establish this specific identity. Um, but it provides this foundation that we can use critically and modify in light of archaeological discoveries. And then eventually this Torah will spread across the world through the Jewish diaspora and also become part of other holy texts. Like particularly, you know, Christianity will adopt this as an important part of their origin story. So let's talk about the Jewish origin story, the, the origin story of the Israelites. So according to the Torah... Uh, Abraham, this mythic father figure who was from Ur and Mesopotamia, he left the place where he was from because the people there worshipped the wrong way. They were idol worshippers of the wrong gods and in the wrong way. And this new god, Yahweh, that he was following, he made a promise to him, uh, with him. Like, really, the Yahweh is making a promise to, to Abraham that Abraham and all his descendants would control the land of Canaan. And so Abraham went there. And they live there for a while, but eventually there's this bad drought. And so the Israelites migrate to Egypt to escape the drought. But eventually in Egypt, uh, the Egyptians become oppressive. And so Moses leads them out of that oppression and through the desert. And while they're in this desert, this difficult time for them, they recraft their religion to be devoted to Yahweh as a singular deity, monotheism. Um, and eventually the belief, not only that he's the one God that you should worship, but also that that one God is the only God that exists, which is a huge mental leap from these other religions. Um, and they also have a particular law set, the Ten Commandments, which we'll talk more about in a minute. But the Israelites, when they go back to Canaan, they make war on the people there and take the land for themselves. And so that's probably this time period where we see them um, taking over that hill country after the collapse. Now, their political patterns, once they return there, we have some evidence for. So we have this evidence of the, the Ten Commandments, which exists in those different holy texts. And you can see that it actually is twice. It pops up twice in those texts. And this is a fascinating chart we can talk more about later. But uh, there were originally these 12 tribes. They were ruled loosely by judges. But once they set up their cities after the Bronze Age collapse, you kind of need more like organized leadership. And so they set up a kingship system. They established their first capital at Jerusalem. And priests, due to this unified religion, become rather powerful and wealthy. And this gap between rural and urban, uh, sorry, rural and urban and rich and poor grows over time. And, you know, you, the, they see the contrast between how they had lived before setting up these cities and these kings and then afterwards. And so prophets, people who claim to have words from God, say that this is not the way we should be living. This is all wrong. And so it's all these fascinating stories of people fighting about how you should live and what's right and what's wrong um, that are all recorded in these texts. And then they also had ongoing conflict with their neighbors, their large neighbors like Assyria, and even like their smaller neighbors around the edges like Moab. Now, socially, they lived in extended families. So multiple generations all together on, under the dominance of the eldest male member of that family. They had slavery that was similar to Mesopotamian slavery like we had studied before if you were an Israelite. If you were not, if you were a foreigner, it could in fact be inherited, which you'll know is different from other systems of slavery we've studied so far. And also being male was kind of important um, because women had a, a lot fewer rights in this system and could not inherit property. So having a son to take your name and inherit your property was rather important. Um, women did have positions of power in earlier days, uh, but it seems like over time they lost some of those positions and the later writers who were trying to establish that Israelite identity seemed to have kind of pushed them in the stories of their past to the edges of that society. Finally, we have the least information about their economic patterns, but generally they traded with the surrounding lands, including even to the south, like Arabia and Africa. And the wealth from the trading supported a you know, large court, like royal court and a bureaucracy and also a rather sizable army. Um, and even a large building project under Solomon who built you know, in Jerusalem this original temple, the first temple. And that was a way uh, that's directly connected to their religious system where these priests had power uh, and they were able to display that power to the folks around them. So they could use this central temple to maintain their really unique religious identity surrounded by people with very different religions than them. So I hope you enjoyed this video on Israel, and I hope uh, you have a great winter break, which I think you'll be doing after this video. Bye.